Yes people, how's it going? Welcome back to Lily White Lane. Hope you're doing good, hope you're keeping safe and well, and hope you're having a smashing and a fantastic Tuesday. Apologies for not making a video in the last few days or not making a Leeds match reaction. I was over in over in Ireland visiting family and look, had a great time there, all across County Wicklow, visiting Dunleary, Bray, all of that good stuff. And look, it's good to be back on the channel, good to be talking about Spurs again. And I wanted to bring to you guys my thoughts and my opinions, my mid-season review for Spurs so far. As we're heading into this very, very strange World Cup break, it does mark the middle of the season. It does mark the Christmas break. And around this time of the year, we like to judge what our teams are doing. That's what I'm going to do today with the boys Tottenham Hotspur. Now look, it's been a very mixed, a very divided when it comes to the fan base, their opinions on this season so far. It's hard to judge. There's been a lot of positives, there's been a lot of negatives. I think we'll start off with the positives of this season. The first one, we're getting results. Yes, occasionally the performance hasn't been there, but Tottenham Hotspur are getting results consistently this season, hence the fact we head into this international break. You know, fourth in the table, in, in a Champions League position, and due to the man of 16. Yes, at times the football's been very, very poor this season, but we're in the round of 16 of the Champions League, you know. We're in the top four of the Premier League. It's all not doom and gloom. And I think the media have been talking about it like that. All I've seen on TalkSport and other media outlets is Tottenham crisis, blah, blah, blah. It's like a lot of people, both Spurs fans and non-Spurs fans, have massively overreacted when we lost two or three games in a row, you know. Tottenham in crisis, Tottenham are a joke, blah, blah, blah. We're in the top four currently, right? We what? Seven points clear of Liverpool, I think six points or something clear of Chelsea, as I say, Man United three points off us, we'll see what happens with that, but we are sitting in the top four, we're through to the round of 16, because we've been getting results. Last season, right, we put in these poor performances, we don't have the players to grind out these results, and that's my point, I think this season we've been much, much better in grinding games out, in staying in games till the last minute, the typical the, uh, Spurs thing to do is give up you go 2-0 down and it's 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 game over we haven't really seen that this season we've seen a lot of resilience from the boys haven't really given up haven't really been out of a game we've been out of a game once or twice this season once in the Carabao Cup against Forest and once against United in the league the rest of the games I think are only one goal difference if we lost and they're very very tight we haven't been smashed this season and you're comparing it to last season people got my blah 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 it is progress. You look at our start to the season, last season, right? Hammered 3-1 by Arsenal. Got to beat 3-1 by Arsenal this year, but not hammered. 3-1 uh, by Arsenal, hammered by them. 3-0 by Chelsea. 3-0 by Palace. 3-0 by United, you know? That beginning of the season under Nuno. And you're looking at Conte's team now. We're staying in games. We're competing more with the top teams. And I'm glad to see that from the boys. I really am. That's a massive positive for our season so far. A massive negative. I think we've got to discuss the performances. I think we've put in some very, very good performances this season. I'm going to name a couple now. I think the Southampton one was a very, very solid performance. We attacked in that game. We weren't defensive. I don't care what the media say. The thriller, the seven-goal thriller that took place this weekend against Leeds. You know, the win against Fulham. We could have won that game 3 or 4 nil. But apart from those three games... The performances do have to step up if we are going to win anything. Will these performances keep on coming in and will we keep on getting the results to get into the Champions League next season? I don't know, but if we're serious about winning the trophy, if we want to win an FA Cup, a Champions League even, the Premier League in the next few seasons, you're not going to do it with performances like these. They may get you over the line when it comes to Champions League football, but to actually win in a trophy, we're eventually going to get broken down. And... I'm sort of glad this international break's coming at the minute. There's there's a part of me, there's a few fan bases that are Chelsea fans as well. Yes, it's all weird, the Guitar World Cup. But for me, it's coming at a good time for us. I think the Leeds game was massive for confidence. And I thought we played, I thought we were the better team in that game. We had more shots, more possession, blah, blah, blah. I think we probably deserve to win it. But before that, teams were just the starting to figure us out. Teams were just starting to beat us more and more. We had the 2-0 against Forest, the loss to United, the loss to Newcastle, the loss to Liverpool. 
And a season that started so well was just starting to go down the drain. So I'm sort of glad there was an international break and we've headed into it um, with a win. And look, when we come back from that international break, come back from that World Cup, it's going to be like the start of a new season. Players, teams are going to be completely different. Players injured. It's, it's going to be weird for not just the players, but the fans and everyone. The managers even, you know. It's a bad time to have a World Cup. I'll still get up for the World Cup. Still probably record a few videos for it. Maybe even predictions, previews, match reactions on this channel. But, yeah, it isn't right. It isn't right. And it, it shouldn't be happening in December. And the only reason it is 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 because of that. But, look, we move and get on with it. It's probably still going to be a World Cup. Still quality teams. Argentina, Brazil, England, blah, France, blah, blah, blah. Germany, Spain. But, look, I, I do think this World Cup is coming at a good time. I do think it's coming at a good time. I think this season we've had a lot of positives as well. Positive player performances. Look, it's it's a very mixed season, a very divided season. Positives for me. I'm going to name some players now that this season for me are playing the best football they have at Spurs. Some of the best football they've played in their career. Rodrigo Bentanker, Pierre Mohuibia. That midfield duo this season, immense. Absolutely immense. This is the thing about these two players. We've only brought Bentanker in in January, but him and Hoibia... Last season, Hoibia, since he joined Spurs, has been very on and off. Good game, bad game. Good game, bad game, you know. Both of them consistently this season have put in massive performances and stepped up when we need them. Ben Tanker stepped up to get that Champions League goal to get that point against um, Sporting Lisbon. Stepped up on the weekend against Leeds with two goals in two minutes to give us the lead. Got the winner against Bournemouth. You know, goals have been coming into his game more. But it's his overall play. And for me, the last five or six games, it's, he's been immense. Even when we lost to Newcastle, for me, that guy was the best player on the pitch against Liverpool. That guy was the best player on the pitch. He's consistently been not just the best Spurs player, but the best player on the pitch for his last five or six games. And this season, the guy hasn't put a foot wrong. He hasn't had one, for me, bad performance. And you see, in the week, without playing him, the team just falls apart. There's no real spine. He's been brilliant. Hoybier. Not on the level of Ben Tanker for me, but has massively stepped up his performances. Really proven himself as a warrior, has put in some very solid performances. And I think those are, those two deserve a lot of credit. Deserve a lot of credit. They've definitely been two, two massive positives of this season. Sun, not the sun we expected. You've got to look at that and go, something's not right now. People, pundits going, waiting for it to click, waiting for it to click. Well, it's December. It hasn't clicked. I'm sort of glad this World Cup's coming as well because maybe he might come back after it as a better player. But look, Sun hasn't been brilliant this season. Royale's somehow gotten worse as a footballer. Eric Dyer hasn't been brilliant. And when it comes to players, you've got a section which seem to be getting worse this season. Sun, Dyer, Royale. And then you've got a section of players who are improving. I think Kane's performances this season, we're seeing one of the best Harry Kane's that we've ever seen and it's not it's not getting talked about enough because you've got an absolute NPC robot in Erling Haaland banging in goals for fun. But Harry Kane's on what, 13 goals? The guy's probably going to get 25, 26, probably beat some of his former golden boot records in an even tougher league where it's more competitive with better strikers and he'll probably beat that record this season and he won't win the golden boot because of Erling Haaland. And that's the thing, you won't get the credit for him. People will compare... Haaland and Kane go, Kane's not as good as Haaland. Kane's better than Haaland. If Kane played for Manchester City, he'd be banging in just as many, if not more, goals, you know? This guy, he hasn't got the best creativity at Spurs. A lot of people talk about the creativity. We've got no attacking midfielders, yet he still scored goal after goal, game after game, when we needed him most. Even that goal against Leeds, he's another massive positive. And I think you look at this season overall, when it comes to player performances and when it comes to results... Major positives, major negatives. The major positives for me were some of the real good performances and even just some of the moments. I think the Chelsea game, that was fantastic. I think first game of the season, Southampton, that was brilliant. Leeds the other day, the 4-3. Four, the four, but then you look at the negatives, the United performance, you know. We've had a few performances this season where the players just 
haven't really given anything, the Arsenal performance, and we just really lacked creativity. Seasons before we do that more, but look, we've got to get that out of the game because you're looking at United now, three points off us when we come back from the international break. We could find ourselves out of the Champions League and out of the Champions League places. And then next season, we're, we're in the Europa League from that Kane goes, from that Conte goes. We've got to be very, very careful. And I think if we go out of the Champions League, it'll be more of a crisis than some people think. So look, top four, it's a season that started with title hopes. I don't think a lot of us really believed that, if I'm honest. I thought we could, maybe. But you're looking at this Antonio Conte project that he's building going... If he gets the tools in January and next summer, next season is the one where we can really, really go for it. I think this season, ideally, change up your objectives, change up what you want to do. I'll be looking at a Champions League place, potentially a trophy and a real good run in the Champions League. And for me, hopefully that'll be a good enough season to keep Kane, to keep Sun, to keep Conte. And I think if we can keep those players and that manager next season... We can really go for it. But it's, it's a shame. I hate talking about next season, next season, next season. It should be this. It could have been this season if Daniel Levy didn't go to sleep for the last month of the, of the summer transfer window. But look, comment your thoughts on our season so far. Thank you for watching this video. Take care of yourselves. All the best. God bless. Have a smashing rest of your Tuesday and week. And as always, comedy Spurs in Conte. We trust. Let's get to the World Cup. Maybe, if you're really interested. Blood money. But anyway... Come on, you Spurs. Take care. All the best. God bless. See you later.